So in today's quick tip, I'm gonna show you how to humanize your hi-hats. Now, if you have hi-hats within your track, 16th hi-hats especially, then they can start to sound quite robotic, quite monotonous, because you're doing them on a computer or on hardware, because it doesn't have that kind of live kind of feel. And I'm gonna show you two very simple techniques for automatically varying the velocities of your hi-hats to make them sound more human-like. So I'm back again with another quick tip. Every single day of January, I'm bringing you a brand new quick tip. And today I'm talking about bringing that human element to your hi-hats. Now, when you're putting 16th hi-hats in, it can start to sound quite robotic and quite monotonous. And that's just generally because how you're putting them in on a computer. If you were playing them live, then you would maybe have kind of different strengths with every single hit. And that's what we wanna kind of do with this. Now you could go through that MIDI clip and adjust those velocities independently, just on your own manually. But I'm gonna show you two really simple ways to do it very, very quickly and completely automatically. So let's jump into Ableton and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So I've got a very simple Ableton project here, just a simple MIDI track with a simpler loaded onto it and a hi-hat sample within it. And my clip here is just 16th hi-hats. And this is how it sounds. So it's really monotonous. As you can see, all of the velocities are exactly the same. But the first thing I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna add a groove to it because that will obviously give it a little bit of a swing and make it a bit more interesting. So I'm gonna hit the groove tab here and some of my favorite grooves are the MPC grooves. Now, because I'm using the 16th notes, I wanna go for one of the 16th swings and I generally kind of go for maybe about the 65, 66 mark maybe. That might be a bit swingy for some of you, but for my kind of music, that works really quite well, but definitely kind of experiment with some of these. So I'm gonna jump in and maybe do, let's do a 64 for a change. So I double click on this and it's added the swing straight into here. And let's hear how that sounds. Already makes it sound a little bit more interesting. I love that swing within there. Right, so let's get to the main part of this video. And that's kind of humanizing these kind of hi-hats. Now, as I said, we could go into this MIDI clip and we could adjust these velocities completely manually and do each one independently. But obviously that's gonna take you a lot of time. And I wanna show you a really, really quick way of doing it. In fact, two different ways of doing it. Now, one of my favorite things within Ableton are the MIDI effects. There are some amazing MIDI effects within here and one of my favorite ones is Velocity. It's such a simple one and we've already covered it in a previous video where I showed you how to use the fixed function, for example, to make a fixed velocity. But one of the most amazing parts of this is the random function. You can actually random the velocities that are coming out of your notes and into your sampler, which is really, really cool. So I'm gonna start up and I'm gonna start tweaking this random knob. So the higher I put it, the more kind of random nature you get in there. So as you could hear there, every single note that came out of here had a different velocity. And that's one of the greatest things of this random feature. However, some of them were really quite low. Now this is because the velocity plugin has a range that it outputs. And we can actually see the range here, the out high and the out low. Now, because this goes between one and 127, we're basically going from almost nothing up to the very, very maximum. Now we don't want it to go all the way down. We want, don't want it to be as low as that. We don't want it to be almost inaudible. So we want to take up the lowest of this range. So I'm actually going to take it up maybe to about 50, for example. And I can actually take down the high if I wanted to, if I don't want it to be the maximum velocity that's coming out of there. So I could take it down to maybe around about 100. So now every single note that comes out of here will be random, but it will be between 54 and 100. So we've actually kind of narrowed the range down. And this is how it sounds now. So as you can hear now, it sounds a lot more natural. Now I can tweak this a little bit more. Maybe I wanna take that low up just a little bit more so it is a little bit more consistent. There we go, so we've got a range of about 
30 in velocity that it's actually going between. So the lowest note, the lowest velocity it's ever going to be is 71 and the highest is 100. And that now sounds kind of, it sounds right for what I want to use. So that is definitely a really great way to be able to adjust the velocity automatically. But I did mention there was a second way of doing it. And if you have Ableton Live Suite, then you've got Max for Live, which is an amazing suite of different effects, really creative ones. And one of my favorite ones within here is the LFO MIDI effect. Now I can drop this on my channel and I can get it to affect just about any plugin or any effect on there. So we can see here that it's just it's whirring away here and it's not actually doing anything at the moment. We need to map it to something. So I'm going to choose the map button within here. And what we're going to do is we're going to map it to the volume. We want the volume to go up and down of the hi-hat. That's effectively what we were doing with the velocity before, but now we're going to do it directly with the volume. So if I now map it to the volume, you can see it's going absolutely crazy. We can see it's going up by about, I think it's about 30 dB and down by 30 dB. Now that's way, way, way too much at the moment. I'm going to decrease the depth so you can actually see what it's doing. And actually, I'll also decrease the rate as well. There you go. So you can now see by, by it going a little bit slower, you can see it's going all the way down to minus four and all the way up to plus four. So you can see it's going up and down and it's going up and down by a sine wave. So it's kind of going, it's just sweeping up and down. So what we want to do, how are we going to make this random and how are we going to make it more interesting like we did with the Velocity plugin? So this is where we can start playing around with some of the features within here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to random. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change it from frequency on here to sync. So this will allow us to then change it to 1 16th. So by changing it to 1 16th, it's actually going to match the 16th hi-hats that we already have within here. But you'll notice it's not actually doing anything at the moment. Because we've set it to sync, it's obviously going to be playing back for it to do anything. So we are definitely getting some random nature in here now, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull down the offset because you'll notice it's going between minus four and plus four. And we don't really want it to go plus four dB. We want to take it down in volume. So we maybe want it to go between maybe minus eight and minus four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it down until we get to kind of where that is. And in fact, I think the range is a little bit too much. So I'm going to take the depth down a little bit. So we're definitely getting the effect that we want on the volume of this hi-hat. However, it doesn't sound very smooth. And we can actually make that better by increasing the smooth knob on the LFO MIDI. So I only increase that by a very, very small amount just to kind of smooth off the edges and make it sound a little bit less jittery. So you may be thinking, why have I showed you the LFO way of doing it when the Velocity plugin works perfectly fine? Well, there's just so many more controls on this LFO plugin. It is amazing to play with. For example, we could change the shape type and it will give you a whole different effect. And also you don't even need to stick with just having one LFO within there. You could put another one within there. We could actually have this controlling the length of it, for example. You can see it now controls the length of the sample. And what we could do is we could randomize the length. So what if I pulled in the end of the sample here? Let's hear how that sounds. And again, let's put it onto sync and put it onto sixteenths. And maybe we don't want that kind of more that that much of a dramatic effect. Take the depth down a little bit. There are just so many creative ways you can use that LFO plugin. I absolutely love playing around with it. Now I showed you both methods because you might not have Ableton Live Suite. And using the Velocity plugin works brilliantly for doing this technique. But if you have Ableton Live Suite, I definitely recommend playing around with the LFO plugin because 
it's so much fun and you can really create some interesting unique effects for your tracks so definitely play around with it and see what you think and if this video has been useful to you then definitely subscribe to my channel every single day this month every single day of january i'm doing a brand new music production tip so definitely get subscribed hit that notification icon and hopefully i'll see you again in the next video Thank you